the statement just delivered. The General Assembly will now hear an address by Luis Rodolfo Corona, President of the Dominican Republic. I ask protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor on behalf of the United Nations to welcome the President of my country, the Dominican Republic, Luis Rodolfo Abinader Corona, and ask him to address the Assembly. President of the 76th Session of the General Assembly, Secretary General of the United Nations, distinguished heads of state and government, distinguished delegates. As we approach the second anniversary of the start of the worst disaster in nearly a century, humankind has not yet been able to definitively close this terrible episode of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nevertheless, we come to this forum with the hope of renewing and strengthening the bonds of cooperation and solidarity as fraternal nations. This global community of states faces enormous challenges that can only be effectively addressed through a renewed multilateralism. Indeed, in the face of the pandemic, the climate emergency, the technological revolution, and the need to design a new paradigm for the welfare state, it is necessary to strengthen unity and cooperation among all nations. We have a historic responsibility to leave a better world than the one that we found, but this is only possible if we take seriously the global transition towards a new ecological, sustainable, inclusive and equitable production model, which is in line with the Sustainable Development Goals of the 2030 Agenda. This change is only possible through a global and multilateral effort that guarantees the rule of law, human rights, and the well-being of all people, leaving no one behind. Despite this unfortunate scenario created by the pandemic, our government has promoted a free vaccination plan that has been successful with visible results and impressive figures. 57% of the eligible population is fully vaccinated. Approximately 70% has received at least one dose, and more than 10% of the population has received a third dose, with a mortality rate of 1.14%, which is one of the lowest in the world. In line with our vision of co-responsibility in order to get out of this pandemic and having an inventory of vaccines that has made it possible, we have donated in solidarity some 820,000 doses to countries in our region that need them, convinced as we are that we will only be safe when we are all vaccinated. However, although we have begun to overcome the pandemic, this will not be enough to overcome the economic and financial crisis. In the interest of maintaining social peace, we are called upon to find a solution to the enormous indebtedness that middle-income countries have been forced into in order to deal with the economic and social ravages generated by the pandemic. There is currently no mechanism for access to concessional financing that allows these countries to solve the liquidity crisis. To overcome this challenge, we must look for new and also urgent solutions. Recently, the Board of Governors of the International Monetary Fund made available an allocation of special drawing rights for an amount equivalent to $650 billion with the aim of strengthening global liquidity. IMF member states receive these funds according to the corresponding quotas per country. This means that a large proportion of these resources was taken up by the developing countries precisely, developed countries precisely those that need them the least. To remedy this unfair situation, industrialized countries should use these resources to create a mechanism to channel the quotas which they have received to middle and low income countries, giving them access to concessionary funds. In such a mechanism, multilateral financial organizations would play a key role. 
thus ensuring that these resources reach the countries that really need them. This initiative would have a very positive impact on international markets because it would give greater sustainability to the debt and it would strengthen trust in our economies and improve the cost of financing, Mr. President. The government that I am honoured to represent is firmly of the belief that democracy is the political system that best guarantees the dignity, well-being and happiness of the people, and that it can only be sustained if it is deepened and expanded. For this reason, I am proud that we have convened in my country all sectors of national life to initiate an open and pluralistic dialogue to achieve reforms that contribute to strengthening the social and democratic rule of law in the Dominican Republic. For this reason, the Dominican Republic is a strong advocate of democracy and human rights, which implies strengthening the checks and balances on the executive branch, and this is achieved through an independent judiciary when its decisions are widely respected by everyone. This government is committed to ensuring the independence of the Public Prosecutor's Office and other control agencies, as well as the reform of the National Police in order to guarantee the rule of law and citizen security. Likewise, our fundamental purpose is to defend the public interest the common heritage of Dominicans, which implies completely transparent management, one of the achievements that gives us the greatest satisfaction. We are convinced that in the midst of the current circumstances, strewn with obstacles, the public continues to demand that we act boldly against corruption, and we have been showing this with clear, precise and robust actions. With regard to the economy, I am pleased to point out that even in the midst of these difficulties, our country is optimistic. It is pro projected that we will end 2021 with economic growth of 10% and maintain a growth rate of 5%, of more than 5%, for the following years. Mr. President, I would like to suggest three actions, if I may, that we consider urgent and necessary for our region and for our country. The Dominican Republic, as a small island developing state, is one of the countries that emits the least greenhouse gases, but which is most affected by the effects of climate change. Now is the time to promote a global transformation of the economy in line with the levels of development so that the required standards do not impose excessive burdens that result in additional costs which are detrimental to competitiveness and the production of our goods and services. It is also fair and necessary that the huge investment necessary to restore our natural resources affected by global warming, which was created by the countries that have generated the most CO2, be paid for by those countries. Point two of these actions. Uh, the current financial crisis and higher indebtedness caused by the pandemic cannot only be solved by increasing taxes in our respective countries, with its social pressures and possible disruption of peace. We must be creative. We are convinced that, at no cost to their governments, Multilateral financial and bilateral uh, financial institutions can grant credit facilities through transparent and accessible concerted and non-discriminatory mechanisms that help countries in difficulty to quickly regain financial sustainability and access to international financial markets with preferential rates that are not affected by the country risk index. Mr. President, our third and final recommendation for action is on Haiti. Since this government assumed power, we have been warning of the possibility that the Haitian situation could go beyond the borders of that country, becoming a factor of insecurity in the region. 
Hence the need for this community of nations once and for all to address the Haitian crisis as a matter of urgency and as an up the utmost priority and to be monitored on an ongoing basis. We note that recently some governments have taken steps to address the consequences of the Haitian crisis. For years, day after day, our country has faced these consequences practically alone. We are convinced that no unilateral action will be sufficient to overcome this dramatic situation. It is imperative that we state in the strongest and most unequivocal terms possible that the international community must not, nor can it, abandon the Haitian people at a time when the levels of insecurity are driving them to self-destruction. And I want to say it today in the most sincere way possible, leaving aside diplomatic language. With the current division among the Haitian leadership and the dangerous presence of criminal gangs that control a large part of the territory, Haitians alone will not be able to bring peace to their country. Much less will they be able to guarantee the conditions to establish a minimum of order. Therefore, the most important and immediate issue in Haiti is security. Only after this has been achieved can free, fair and reliable elections be held. Then, with a new government as a legitimate interlocutor, it will be possible to draft a truly comprehensive economic and social development plan with all the necessary resources and supported in solidarity by the international community, since it is no longer possible to think of humanitarian measures alone. To this august assembly, I declare that the Dominican Republic has shown and will continue to show its due solidarity and collaboration with the Haitian people. But I also reiterate that there is not, nor will there ever be, a Dominican solution to the crisis in Haiti. Mr. President, the number of challenges that our states face is significant if we are to build a world under the banner of equality. However, we must not face them alone. Integration and multilateralism are the ideal ways to advance towards our goals without leaving anyone behind. It is my firm conviction that the leadership of the United Nations will continue to be renewed and strengthened day by day. The Dominican state reaffirms its commitment to the fundamental principles of the Charter of the United Nations – peace, human dignity, just, justice, social progress and freedom. Let us move forward resolutely towards a renewed and more equitable welfare state. We cannot fail our peoples. We cannot fail history. Thank you very much. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of my country, the Dominican Republic, for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.